This show is brought to you by ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Elise and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Elise, spelled E-L-Y-S-E. ZocDoc.com slash Elise. The Apple Books app is the single destination for all the books and audiobooks you love, all subscription-free. And now, Apple Books has teamed up with the Lemonada Podcast Network for an audiobook club that features one thought-provoking audiobook every month. The June pick is Honey, Baby, Mine, A Mother and Daughter Talk Life, Death, Love, and Banana Pudding by Laura Dern and Diane Ladd. For more details, visit apple.co forward slash Lemonada Book Club and listen to Honey, Baby, Mine today on Apple Books. Lemonada. Okay, actually, can you just pretend that you're listening to a fully complete theme song here? I got really in my head and I tried to make it perfect and I couldn't. So this is going to be the theme song right here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Funny Cause It's True. I'm Elise Myers. I've always admired people who live by their own rules and have like a really unbreakable sense of self. Our guest today, Sam B, is most definitely an example of that. Her time on The Daily Show and her creation of the show Full Frontal were opportunities to watch someone just at the top of their game. She holds people in power accountable through her work, and she is very funny while doing it. So two things that are funny because they're true. Number one, listen to see if you can hear the sound of me like screeching with excitement when we talk about her tour and live comedy show, Your Favorite Woman. And number two, during this conversation, I learned what my next street meet outing will be when I visit New York next, so... That's extremely exciting for me and everyone involved. All right, let's get into it. Sam, hello. How are you? Hello. Oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, okay, this is we fun. Are. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, I don't, this has nothing to do with anything, but I literally, it's mm-hmm. all I'm thinking about is do, are you a Vanderpump fan? And do you know what's going on? I don't watch Vanderpumps. Okay. I know that there's a scandal. The, sca- the whole scandal of all. <sighs> Somebody's cheated on someone yeah. publicly, yeah. and then people were following someone. Yeah. And they were like, I caught you outside of Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, you know what? Anything you would, could say right now would be right because it's all happened. What, what, I guess what shows do you like to watch? What is, your, what is your vibe on TV? I don't know what I watch anymore. I don't feel like there's anything for me on television right now. So I go back to, you know what I really love, which what? is. So extremely dorky. It's so dorky that I love it so much that I haven't watched the latest season because I'm afraid I don't want to break the seal. Okay. Like I want to know that it's there for me when I need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Call the midwife. Oh, call the midwife. What is it about? It's like midwives in post war London. <gasps> It's incredible. It's the most like sneaky, it's like the sneaky feminist, heartwarming, ridiculous show. And then every week, babies are born and you're like, you're like, they had, the baby was born. And it's like, sometimes so tragic, you can't stop crying. And sometimes you're just crying from joy. <laughs> it's unbelievable. My producer Claire just messaged me and said, it's so good, but please don't watch it before you give birth because I'm about to give birth. <laughs> oh, you're about to give birth. Yeah, don't. And she's like, Elise, I'm, I'm telling you right now, do not watch it. Do not watch. Yeah, you know what? I second that. I didn't realize you were about to give birth. Okay, yeah, no. But you know what? About a, six months after, yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. be fine. I'll, I'll have healed from the trauma of it, and I'll be ready <laughs> yeah. to take that all in. You'll be ready. So do you watch a lot of shows that have some kind of like underlying message, like political shows or period pieces? Is that kind of your vibe when watching TV? Um, I, th- I think it's more like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch that much comedy, but I think that's more has more to do with the fact that I so I know how the sausage is made of Mm, comedy. That makes sense. And it's not like it's not as entertaining to me as something that I can immerse myself in that I'm just like, how did they make this? Yeah, you know all about it. This is a miracle. (laughs) Like, this is so serious and dire. 
I can't make that. <laughs> that's interesting. That's no, that's true. It's like a it's like a chef that cooks all night and doesn't come home and makes their own right. food. They eat a bowl of cereal, kind of like that. Yeah, or they stop at like Gray's Papaya on the way yeah. home and they get like a papaya dog. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I have no clue what Gray's papaya is, but Sam said it in reference to a hot dog. So I'm just picturing like a piece of papaya in a bun. Or a milkshake. And you're like, aren't you like the greatest (laughs) chef? Aren't you a Michelin star chef? Yeah, but (laughs) it's like sometimes if I work out really hard at the end of the workout, I want a hot dog so badly. That's why I work out. It's for the hot dog. dog. (laughs) That's the point of what else what what else do you work out for? So speaking of kind of like what you do, especially in the comedy world, I know that like mm-hmm. you have such a gift of oh. of like interviewing people, first of all, but then the interviews you do are always have this like underlying like serious tone and you kind of have to like bring the light to it, either in like the Daily Show or like things like that. Mm-hmm. I'm really curious if you have always been that way, if you've always, if you decided to lean into that because that was your job or if it comes natural to you. Um, I think that, well, when I, cause I really didn't, it's not like I spent my whole life aspiring to be interviewing people. Like I did a child just like on the playground, yeah, just like, interviewing. although <laughs> to be honest, I did when I was a child, I made a recording of me doing fake news and interviewing people in my home. <gasps> Wait, tell me all about this. <laughs> so I do actually have, I have a cassette, like just one surviving audio cassette that is called, and I have my own like seven-year-old handwriting on it, and it's called News for Goofs. News so for cute? Goofs! News for Goofs! Oh! And, and it's a little bit like breaking the seal of not watching Call the Midwife because I'm afraid to listen to the tape. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I, know, I think I know what's on it, but not only am I afraid to break the, f- physically break the tape, yeah. but I am also think it's maybe much better in my imagined version of it than it is in real life. You have to go back and listen to it and you have to I use do. it in something because that is like such a Probably. full circle moment of, I it, I did that yeah. too. My first like big purchase was a camcorder, not the news, but <gasps> like I never in a million years would have imagined my life would be doing the job I do now. But right. if you look back on my life, I'm like, all oh, the signs were there. <laughs> like, I would right. go around with a camcorder and just like film people. And, you know, you couldn't edit in mm-hmm. anything. So you would edit within the camcorder and you would like, you know, yeah. fast forward and cut there and then do the little transition of like crossfade. And and I was like, I it's, loved making stuff. And I would have never guessed oh that would have been my life now. That is so cool. That is really cool. Okay, well, we should trade. We should we just should trade. download all this stuff, <laughs> do a complete trade, and then yes. we'll know each other's secrets. Like, origin story other than news for goofs though yeah. you didn't do any interviewing like no. that in like middle school high school interviewing no i really learned how to do that at the minute i got the job at the daily wow. show like i loved watching it it was yeah. my favorite show so when i got the job i had to literally learn how to interview people and it was really hard it's a hard job it's hard it's, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm learning as i go i have never been in this kind of role and so Every time I go to do an interview, I'm always mm-hmm. just like, well, I'm probably going to black out. And we'll see how it goes on the other end. <laughs> going to go into a trance. I don't know if yeah. I said words. Were those distinguishable what from happened? just regular sounds? How did you get into that role then? So did you like audition for it? I or did. did. Okay. Yeah, I did. And they were not really good at auditioning people. In a way, the producers of the show didn't know what was required of you in oh. the actual job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because they never would have auditioned people the way that they did if they had really had a comprehensive view of what the job was. Because how did they audition you? They would just give you a script and be like, "Can you read the script on camera?" And so oh, like I did. Acting kind of. Yeah, just like, can you pretend that you're a journalist? And I was like, "Yep, I sure can," because I know exactly what you guys do at the show. Hundred percent, totally. Hundred percent, got it. And then, <laughs> then they were like, "Okay, great, you're going to South Dakota to interview some real people in their homes." And you have to make jokes, but also get the full story. And you're going to be there for three days, and you're going to film for <laughs> you're going to film for four, 42 hours with this family. <gasps> so come back with something great. And it was was that like, your first job? It was one of the first jobs I did. Was going to like Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and going to this man's house, and just being. And they were like, "Okay, well, just make some funny hijinks in his house." 
No, see, if this was my first gig as a reporter and someone gave me the brief of just go make some funny hijinks in his house, I would come back with like a talk show we created in his house to then give back to the people that hired me to go do the hijinks. And then they'd say, what is this? And I would say, hijinks. And they would say, this is not the hijinks we were asking for. And I'd say, well, then don't say hijinks next time. But that's just me. And I was like, what are you talking about? How, How- I- <laughs> did, do this. did you just feel like so in over your like what did that feel like to just be like this isn't what I knew I was doing and here we are I could, I knew that I was going to be doing it but I didn't know what it would be like in real life when you're talking to a you know like well I know you know you know when you're preparing for an interview it's so theoretical like yeah you try to anticipate what a person is going to say you kinda, yeah you try to make a little map for yourself you try and then it just goes where it goes And it's like that in the field, but then you have to add a lot of jokes on top of it. And so you're storytelling, also handling a real person, also trying to put jokes in there. It's like, it's very tricky. So like the first time I went out, I went out with someone who was a former producer from 60 Minutes, actually, who was working at The Daily Show. And he was like a hard ass and I love him. He's just like someone I treasure now, but he was a, a hard ass in that really? moment. He taught me, he literally taught me how to do it. And it probably took a year before I had a clue what was happening before I wasn't just like, so scared and shivering. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any like improv background or anything like that? Like, I'm just wondering how that comedy mixes in with the actual reporting. Cause I feel like that I would never know which one to lean more towards. Well, I mean, I did sketch comedy. I was, okay. you know, writing comedy and performing all the time. So I had, like, I had all of that. And then I had my knowledge of the show. Yeah. So I had, like, my knowledge of the style of the show. And then I was learning the skill of, it's like the skill of listening. This is like when someone starts talking about eye contact in a conversation with you, and then you become super aware of your eye contact with them. So then you do like mini breaks away from their eyes so that it doesn't seem uncomfortable. But in this case, it was listening. So did I have a list of questions that I wanted to ask her? Yeah, absolutely. But then I became aware of them because she said, that's not a good thing. So now I don't, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Listening to someone really, really listening to them and also putting your own agenda into the conversation. It's like balancing where someone's going with your own needs because you have a job. You're bringing a job that you have to do. You're trying to execute on something. So learning that blend, it it took years. And then I just did it, I mean, thousands of times, thousands of interviews. Did you ever have a conversation where you had like you like you had a prep with you and then Mm -hmm. the person that was talking you were like no I'm gonna go there and you kind of had to make like a hard right where you're like I might get in trouble for this but I'm gonna go here that was the norm (laughs) yeah that happened just so much there's always so much you think you know about someone's real life and then when you get into the story or you start talking to them you're like oh they're a real person you're a real real human being information yeah oh you have like you have a heart you have a human heart yeah so you realize in the moment you're like oh well, this was a funny story. This was a funny story until we learned your actual story because you were so generous. You told us, you know, what led to this, like what led to the funny thing is not really very funny. So now we know we have to handle you in a different way and make sure that you feel like treasured or make sure that we're storytelling correctly. And like, it was great. It was, it was great. It was never what we expected. And sometimes it was funnier or weirder than we thought it would be, but mostly it was like, hmm, got to figure this person out. You were there for a long time, right? A long time. How long did you do that job? 12 years, yeah. 12 I years? 12 years, yeah. I did it for a really long time. Was there ever a point where you felt like I could just do this forever? Or uh, how did you make? How did you decide, I guess, to make that transition out and then into what you did next? I don't know if you know this, but I worked with my husband, did the same job as me. So we were at oh, wow. The Daily Show together. We were really intentional about kind of like building a business together. And we always knew that our next job should be something that we personally made, that we needed to like kind of put those building blocks in place while we had a good job. So we were always trying to make something work. Like we were selling TV pilots and like waiting for one to be greenlit. Yeah, And it just, we just got extremely 
extraordinarily lucky, actually, that one of the pilots that we wrote together did get greenlit. Mm -hmm. And then John announced that he was leaving. And then the same network offered me a show. So it all happened all at the same time in the spring of 2015 or something like that. It was crazy. What was it like being at the helm of it? You were now it. Like you had to make Mm -hmm. all these decisions. Like what was it the week to week like for you? And how did that differ from working on someone else's show? Well, it's, it's great and it's difficult because you, if you work for someone else, you can, you can blame them for a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you can really, like you're not responsible for people's happiness. You can be a complainer. You can be like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like the way we're doing this. Not sure about that. And also if something goes wrong or like something hits the audience wrong or like a controversy emerges, it's not your responsibility. Hmm. Yeah. You're you're not the face of it anymore. You're not the face of it. Yeah. And so that, that was a real, that's a transition, like Hmm. being solely responsible and you're not, Ultimately, you're not the only person like who's – you have like a whole team of people who are creating, but you are the face of the thing. Right. You're at the receiving end of praise and you're at the receiving end of like anger or hatred or like controversy or whatever. Everything Sam just talked about is like everything I love about being a business owner because there's nothing worse than not loving something and then just not being able to change it or do anything about it. So all these reasons that she's listing are like reasons I – started my own business. <laughs> Did you find that that changed or affected the way that you wrote and created things because now your face was on it? Did you feel more timid in your creativity when you first started? I felt, no, I felt very bold actually. Oh, really? No, I really thought we would have six episodes to just wow. like say everything in and then get canceled. Cause I'm like, you can't have these opinions and be so loud about it and be on TV. Like no one's going to go for that. Yeah. And in the end it just timed perfectly with how people were feeling. So it it went on longer. Okay, time for a quick break. When we come back, Sam tells us about her tour, Your Favorite Woman. I've always been somebody that loves capturing moments, taking photos, writing down stories that have happened in my past, and then kind of keeping them all together in one place. Um, So when I found StoryWorth, I was really excited to start using it for my family. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and then experience them together. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one a thought-provoking question of your choice from their vast pool of options, like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or, if you could see into the future, what would you want to find out? After one year, StoryWorth will compile your loved one's stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. I'm so excited for this time next year when my family and I will be able to go through all the answers that we've collected throughout the year. Give someone that you love in your life a unique, meaningful gift that you'll all cherish for years. StoryWorth. Right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash Elise. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash Elise to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash Elise. So this might be kind of random, but I get a lot of compliments on my scrambled eggs. And I have to be honest with you, I actually learned everything I know from Gordon Ramsay himself. It was on Masterclass, but I think that still counts. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best. Anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. Annual memberships start at $10 a month, and you can get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insights, and much more. There's over 180 classes to pick from, everything from building a fashion brand with Diane von Furstenberg to writing for television with Shonda Rhimes. Whatever you're interested in, there's a class for you. My personal favorite right now, of course, is Gordon Ramsay's class. He films it all in his home kitchen, and it just really feels like you're there with him when you learn how to make pasta from scratch or like the best scrambled eggs of your life. Get unlimited access to every class, and right now, as a funny because it's true listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash Elise. That's masterclass.com slash E-L-Y-S-E for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. You're doing a tour right now, right? Yeah. From what I've seen of the show, I like 
perked up when I got to see that you're doing like a combination with this tour. The name of the tour is Your Favorite Woman, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the I saw that you do like a combination of like digital content and then mm -hmm. live performance. And like, if I were to ever do a live tour, that is exactly what I would do. And so I really want to know oh, how gosh. you got to that point and like, how do you make those decisions? And what is that like for you to kind of creatively produce that? Well, you know what? It's exactly that what it's exactly like what we were saying. It's that's what I would want to see. Yeah. That's I crave dynamic variants and things. Like yeah. I crave something that takes me here, takes me there. Show me a thing. I same kind of need to there's nothing I mean, I love live performance. I go see stuff all the time. But there is always like a lag period in a live performance where you're like kind of fall asleep and you need to be <laughs> You need somebody to, even if it's like the greatest performance in the world, often you're just like your attention wanes or you, yeah. you, your mind wanders. I just saw the musical Parade on Broadway and about halfway through, like right before intermission, I got lost in a train of thought about how strong the chandelier was that I was sitting directly underneath. And if it really was possible to swing from a chandelier like the Sia song. Um, and then I started humming the song underneath my breath as I was just staring straight at the ceiling when all of the action was happening on stage like so far down below us, right in front of us. Um, so then I got asked if I was okay. So I get it. And I think that having a multimedia experience wakens you out of that. It kind of, it just like shows you something in a different way. It's instantly gratifying. I, I like that for myself. Okay, so you you do the combination of mixed media and how like, was it overwhelming to kind of plan to do that? Totally. Did you have to sell people on it or were you were like, this is what I'm going to do? I just sell a few people on it. And I more or less had to sell people on the fact that I was actually interested in doing it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> because I've been so resistant to it because I just have been too busy. So people were like, really? You're going to yeah. do that? And I was like, no, I love being on a stage. I do. I'm so completely comfortable on a stage I, when I'm very prepared, when I have like lots of material and I'm proud of it, I feel great. Yeah. Um, getting there is really terrifying. And I think a lot of people who truly know me were like, are you really up for this? This is what you that really want to. That'd be we, me. <laughs> yeah. You want to put yourself in a place of total discomfort for a really long time. Yeah. And it's not wrong that you have to place obstacles and challenges in your own path sometimes to see yourself punch through them. I encourage you to do it and to do it in exactly the way that you want to do it because it's invigorating. The thing for me is kind of like when we were talking about like breaking the seal earlier of like, I don't mm -hmm. want to open that thing because I wanted to like not meet my expectations, but like mm -hmm. I'm afraid of live shows being this thing where I, what I do is so I, I never have an audience in front of me. I do right. everything by myself and I am very sure of the creative decisions I make mm -hmm. in a vacuum in my room with a camera. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as you have to bring other people into it, like an audience, now they're the volume of their laugh will give you a direct like answer as to whether what you did is funny. Yeah. You can't convince people by how much you love it. And I think that really scares me. Uh, yeah, right. That's the that's the <laughs> that's the joy and the pain of it. It's like because you're so scared, it's telling you that you should try it, and you should try it because yeah. you'll probably really like it. But the first, I would say, I think for four to six months, you'll be really mad at yourself. <laughs> really, Where, but, is that what your experience was? I not that I'm not mad at myself, but I was just you know sometimes you. You you always feel it in the back of your mind. So it's mm. hard to like it's hard to like truly relax because if you're at Thanksgiving and you're like, This is so fun, look at all these smiling faces, you're like, Yeah, but I have to write a show. Oh man. Yeah, like yeah. but I have to go, but I'm going on tour in April. <laughs> like it's, it's always, always in the back of like your mind. It's always there. But then once you start it and you you know, you have like a little nest of people who are creative, who do, you know, you can collaborate just like with the exact right people in your life who support your ideas, who will also tell you if your ideas are not good. 
yeah. need someone in your life who says no. A that sucks. Bit. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Don't ever terrible. say that again. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, no, don't do that. I didn't. Yeah. Like, I found. I think that was offensive. Yeah. You know. I'm offended. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you do. It is. It requires a lot of trust in yourself, but also yeah. you have to think like people are coming to see you, and yeah. if they're coming to see you, that means they like what you do and who you truly are. And so whatever comes out of you is going to be an expression of that. And they're, yeah. they are, they're going to like it. They're going to love the experience. Yeah. Did you, have you found that now that you've started actually touring it, mm-hmm. that it was what you thought it would be? Is it better? Like what, actually, what was it like actually making it happen? It's more fun than I thought it would be actually. Really? I definitely, because I really came to a place where I really, I really, this is so crazy but like i've just come to this place where i'm like i these are things i need to say now so i have no hesitation about there's nothing in it there's nothing in the show that i'm like oh i don't know about this i right. like it i don't expect everybody in the audience to like like every second of it or agree with every second of it i don't i'm like this is me i don't know this yeah. is what i like i'm presenting it to you i'm proud of it like it or not. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I hope you do. But you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> also, I, lo- I love you. I hate you. <laughs> I it's love all- you. I hope you walk away <laughs> having some kind of like catharsis or like a moment that you really, truly like laughed. Yeah. And um, and if not, don't tell anyone that you didn't enjoy it. <laughs> if don't not, tell us all. Throw it like just delete the memory from your brain and this never happened. Yeah. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to. It wasn't that long. So yeah. it should it should erase with just like a <laughs> couple of margaritas and it's going to be gone forever. Don't worry. I love that you're like the back and forth of like, I'm so confident in myself. It doesn't matter. And also I, I only really want to hear about it if you like it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I'm not going to listen to it. Like, and I don't want to hear about it. I don't read anybody's view. I don't want to hear That's anybody's good. feedback, good or bad. And I don't hear, I don't, I, excuse myself healthy. from it. Yeah. I, I just had to, I don't pay attention yeah. to what anybody says because I can't. I think it's healthy. That That's why you have to have people in your inner circle that will be mm-hmm. honest with you because yes. you know that everything they say is going to be out of love and also they want you to succeed and win. And so yes. you, it's like, you need to keep those people in your corner and you can't just like let that, you know, responsibility <laughs> fall on people that have never met you before and don't care about you and will never see you ever again. <laughs> that is I can't, correct. You can't have that at all. Yeah. You cannot have your self-worth invested in strangers as much as no. we love we love the strangers who love our material of course but your self-worth cannot be contingent on acceptance of everything yeah. you do or say there was just like this person that really latched onto my content and hated mm-hmm. me and followed oh. me and it was like a hate follow and it was mm-hmm. just a really like they just made it their life mission to like make spoofs on every video i posted and it mm-hmm. was like oh, just so I am not that kind of person. I couldn't imagine being that kind of person. No. So I was trying to empathize and understand and like fix if I needed to fix. And I just, there was no reasoning with it. And it was like, I just had this, this like visual in my mind of like this one person. It's like by focusing so much on them, I was giving them the keys to this whole platform and like right. giving them over all of these people that really love me and support me and, mm-hmm. and are learning from my content. It's like, yes. What? Like it's making the millions of other people that love me and want to support me like mm-hmm. suffer with me. And it's like right. this is so silly. It can just be a lot. And so it's very smart of you to just be like, This is what I love. I want you to see it and I'm a proud of it. And if you don't like it, that's all good. Go eat a hot dog and have a great day. <laughs> okay, fun fact. Um, I was just informed throughout this interview that Gray's papaya is actually a very famous hot dog chain in New York. And as a street meat enthusiast, I'm very ashamed that I've never heard of this place in my life. And I feel like I need to go to New York now just to go to Gray's papaya. So stand by on that. <laughs> it's 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 a struggle. It's very, very hard to tune that stuff out. It's actually hard, especially if it's your business. Yeah. To be engaging with people. It's hard to like skip over people who oh, yeah. say terrible things. And there's well, a lot. It's hard because like I I have made it a very big goal of mine to be very present in the mm-hmm. in the community that we're building and in the comments. And so I hold the comments on my videos very 
dearly to me. Mm-hmm. And so you can't you can't like respect and appreciate your comment section without also very much caring about seeing something negative about you because it's yeah. like you, you you know you appreciate the love and then you fear the hate. So I just have to understand that I'm going to see things that people don't you know, that don't ever think I'm going to see. And it, and then it kind of ruins my day. And I try and not let it. And then I move on. And, you know, you get a little desensitized to it, but it doesn't go away. I think that it'd be silly to be like, I'm not affected by it. I'm a robot. Because that's just, for me at least, not, it, it's impossible. Impossible. Like you can't, and it's actually weird how the ratio works. Really quick, I don't know if you know who John Gottman is, but he's one of my favorite authors. And he's like um, a scientist around love, which is really interesting. And he has this thing called the Love Lab where he like studies fights with people and how to like predict divorce rates. It's really crazy. And I love all of his work. But one thing he talks about is um, the magic relationship ratio. Basically, it means um, every good thing that happens, it's like a five to one ratio. So if you have one negative thing that happens, you have to have five positive things to counteract your brain to like not be a negative sentiment override. And this just reminded me of that because you can have so much like positive feedback from people, but then you get one negative comment and it's going to take five positive comments, you know, to combat that. It's very upside down because you could read a thousand great comments and you would just be like, I'm really, everybody's really loving this. And then one person will be like, well, you you suck. (laughs) balls you you're stink. bad you stink <laughs> what is this shit and you're like oh no i am terrible and it's like the ninety nine thousand <laughs> comments that are kind are like become white noise because the one comment that is is mean is hitting an insecurity that i have and that's just i it says more about my relationship yeah. to myself than it does about their relationship to me and it's it's just constantly reworking that in my brain and convincing myself of that <laughs> you know how there's like one person that you know who's just so good at cutting to the chase of yeah someone's deepest insecurity they just yeah. know exactly what it is they zero in on it Like if someone had said to me in high school, they'd be like, oh, you're wearing knockoff Nikes. (laughs) Like I would have died. Like I would die. Yeah. And those comments are like that. I I mean. Yeah. They just embed in your soul. They do. And then it's like this thing that like when it was you were younger, like it plants. And then every time someone like says something that aligns with that, it like waters it. And then it's all of a sudden like coming out of your head, whether you want it to or not. This like tree of like shame. <laughs> You're just like, what is going on? And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a whole process. But I think that it's one thing that comes with a really, really, really cool job. And it's like, I just have to constantly reorient and just be like, I love yeah. what I do so much. I'm so fucking lucky to get to be a creative person for a living. Yeah. That was a total de- de- derailing. No, no, but- no. I <laughs> love it. I love, I love talking about it because I think that it's not like I often do. I wonder, I'm like, Oh, does JLo read everything that is, oh, she can't possibly like, I can't it imagine. Can't, it's, it, it's too hard. You can't actually do your work Mm-mm. if you're caring too much what people are saying about you or like their theories about you and like the rabbit holes. You just like cannot pay attention to it. You have to just do the minimum engagement with negativity. All right, time for another break. When we return, we hear about Sam's new podcast, Choice Words. If you know me, you know that I love to research. I do my homework on pretty much everything that I possibly can from picking the perfect movie or restaurant to the most important decision of all, finding a doctor I can trust with my health. It's crucial for me to know exactly what I'm getting into and how they can help me. And that's where ZocDoc comes in. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. You know what else is a game changer? The patient reviews. Now I can see what other people loved about the doctors that I'm considering, find a doctor I trust, and hopefully get a quick fix for whatever's bothering me. No more guessing or crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. Say goodbye to uncertainty and hello to peace of mind with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Elise and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Elise, spelled E-L-Y-S-E. ZocDoc.com slash Elise. The Apple Books app is the single destination for all the books and audiobooks you love, all subscription-free. 
And now, Apple Books has teamed up with the Lemonada Podcast Network for an audiobook club. Every month, a thought-provoking audiobook and its author are featured. The June pick is Honey Baby Mine, A Mother and Daughter Talk Life, Death, Love, and Banana Pudding by actress and activist Laura Dern and her mother, legendary actress Diane Ladd. It's the kind of story you won't want to put down. And with Apple Books, you'll be able to enjoy it on the go wherever you are. For more details, visit apple.co forward slash Lemonada Book Club and listen to Honey Baby Mine today on Apple Books. All that to say, so you're you're doing a tour. It's going yep. awesome. And, yes. And, and I want you to do one. I want you to do one so I will. badly now. You have I to. Will. Yeah. I'm going to pop are. a baby out. And then yep. after that, I'll like heal my body. Yes. And then I'll like, our family will figure it out. And then we're going to do a tour. That's like my goal. That's um, great. Maybe I'll start writing it next year. And if not, it doesn't go out on the road next year, then the year after that. That's like, yeah. I've got to do it. I've got to make it happen. You'll um, have so many creative thoughts when the baby comes out. I feel like oh, I yeah. did have when you're just spending all that time sort of just like sitting with something else. Yeah. <laughs> feeding a baby. You'll be like, all right, let me think about this. Yeah. Um, okay. So then on your on your tour, when did you start the idea of a podcast? How did that happen? Like, well, that was something that because at when I was doing Full Frontal, we had we had a podcast that we had oh, a companion okay. podcast. And I really just loved it. I don't know. I, and you're like, this was, is right. This was it's something I actually love to do. Like we're having a great conversation here. It's just my favorite thing. I love it. And so many of the interviews I've done in the past have been like, Oh great. You have this great conversation with someone for a full hour. And then you need 45 seconds of them saying three sentences. And that's what you use from this use. whole thing that you did with them. It's so and you crazy. Like, yeah. And you like exchanged phone numbers and you were like, I'd love to talk to you about this further. And then it's just distilled down do. to this <laughs> tiny thing. Um, so doing a companion podcast to the show made a lot of sense. It was really fun to do. I loved it. And so I was like, in the spirit of, that was just the one thing that I wanted to, like I knew I would do a tour, but the one thing I wanted to keep going was that. Cause I do, I love it. I just personally love it. I got to listen to four minutes of, um, cause our podcasts are through the same company for people that don't know yeah. through Lemonada. And I got to listen to the, like some, like four minutes of your, an episode of yours, oh, okay. of you like introing it. And it was so oh. good. And oh, you, really? you sound so comfortable. And I just couldn't have imagined feeling that comfortable my first time recording, but obviously you have so much experience and you're like this you're used to just doing this you know life and job and you sound so comfy and oh, i just gosh. i want to encourage you that it's like i'm really excited for you this is great oh thank you thank yeah. you so much oh my of god course. this is this is one of those nice conversations this is a great <laughs> conversation that i feel could go on for three hours it's lovely for people that don't know yet can you explain what choice words is about yeah it's it's really a podcast about people's choices because obviously i'm pro-choice but i'm also literally pro choices and I love because I feel like this has been for myself I've just been at this crossroads just figuring out the rest of what my life is going to look like and yeah. so there have been so many crossroads where I've made such strong choices like either successes or failures and yeah. I love hearing about the choices that people made that get them to the place where they are yeah it's often like your whole life can turn on the smallest little decision that you make. It's like we were talking about earlier when we were like, the writing was on the wall, like with our camcorders right. and stuff. It's like, you don't realize, but then you like recount your life and all these little things added up to the, where you are now. Exactly. And that's like a really cool thing to look back on and, and see. And if you have a handle on that, like if you can think back, like I have some deep, like deep dive choices that were made and choices not made. And like, those are important too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's an interesting concept. I'm excited for everyone to get to hear all of it. Thank you. I love hearing about other people's successes and failures. It's one of my yeah. favorite things is to hear like Michelle Obama talk about when she really <laughs> failed at something. I'm like, yay. Is Michelle Obama a guest that you want to have on the no. show? No. Oh, well, of course. But that's kind of a dream. I was like, damn, girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> starting, you know, like Michelle. <laughs> whatever. Just starting with, what's her name? Michelle. No, but just that's listening to her. I like, yeah. I like hearing that stuff. I need to know oh that, like, Judy Bloom made some bad decisions. 100%. I need to know. I need to know. Sam, thank you so much. It was so good to meet you. And I oh. feel, I'm, like, so excited for your podcast and all of the things. I just I'm cannot wait to hear all the full episodes. So happy to be talking to you. This was total pleasure. Thank you, Sam. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Samantha B. Make sure to check out her new podcast from Lemonada Media, Choice Words, wherever you're listening right now. And while you're at it, if you like this show, give us a little rating and a review. It helps more people find us. All right. Be back next week. Bye. There's more funny because it's true with Lemonada Premium. Get access to all of Lemonada's premium content, including my five questions with Sam B coming out this Friday. Subscribe now in Apple Podcasts. Funny Cause It's True is a Lemonada Media and Powder Keg production. The show is produced by Claire Jones and Zoe Dennis. Our senior producer is Jamila Zara Williams, and our associate producer is Oha Lopez. Rachel Neal is our senior director of new content, and our VP of weekly production is Steve Nelson. Executive producers are Stephanie Whittles Wax, Jessica Cordova Kramer, Paul Feig, Laura Fisher, Kessla Childers, and me, Elise Myers. This show is mixed by Johnny Vince Evans, additional help from Noah Smith and Ivan Kryev. Our theme song music was written by me and scored by Xander Singh. Follow Funny Cause It's True wherever you get your podcasts or listen ad-free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. BFF's Kulat Balaisak and Zujin Pak bring heartfelt, hilarious, and sometimes subversive conversations about consuming and consumers to add to cart. This podcast explores what they and we buy and buy into. Who knew a confession about buying a fast fashion chili pepper swimsuit could segue into a conversation about body positivity? Kulap and Sujin will make you laugh, cry, and take a closer look at what you do and don't buy. Listen to Add to Cart wherever you find your podcasts. Hey, it's Andy Slavitt, host of In the Bubble from Lemonada Media. In the Bubble is the go-to place to learn more about the most important news events on your mind and with a bunch of awards to prove it. We take the time that's needed to go beyond the headlines with A-list guests from my bubble, from Tina Fey to Tony Fauci, from the next vaccine to the next election issue to an occasional dad joke. It's actual facts from actual experts. In the bubble, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts.